Massive welcome to week two of the Get Inspired 12 week body transformation course. So what I wanna do this week is for the next 11 weeks, week two all the way to week 12, we're gonna start the sessions off in exactly the same way. So first things first, what I want you to do, if you haven't done already, I want you to send me your weekly weigh-in. If you've been taking progress photos as well, then that's great, you can send me them too. But what I want you to do uh, is just send me across your weight, from last week, so you start weight and then you wait for this week. Um, hopefully it's been a great week and you've managed to lose a couple of pounds or half a pound or maybe you've just been eating healthily and you're really happy with that. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter if you've lost weight or gained weight, just make sure you send me across your weekly weigh in so I can track that. Um, but well done, get it done now and get it emailed across to me. And then the second thing, so every single week I wanna do that. And then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at what you're proud of, what you've achieved, what you've struggled with for this week, and then what you're really gonna improve upon for next week. So what I want you to do is grab a piece of paper and a pen. If you need to pause this now, then do so, but you need a piece of paper and you need a pen because we're gonna write some stuff down. And we're always gonna start off the same way. So what I wanna know, what two things, so uh, basically a maximum of two things that you're really proud of that you've done with this week. So what two things have you done well this week and you're proud of? So on your sheet of paper now, write down proud or cheers, and I want you to pause this now and write down the two things that you're most proud of for this week. So examples are maybe you've gone to the gym three times. Um, remember last week I set you a challenge of having breakfast every single day. So maybe you've achieved that and you're proud of that. Maybe you've upped your water intake. Maybe you've been skipping some desserts. Anything that you think of that you're proud of for this week, pause this now and write those down. So you should have on your sheet of paper now two things that you've done really well this week and that you're proud of. So now what we're going to have a look at are two things that you've struggled with, so two potential challenges that you've faced. So examples of those could be not having enough time to go to the gym, um, maybe those limitations that we had a look at last week when you were goal setting, maybe there was still a problem. Um, anything like that, maybe you know, didn't like I say, maybe one or two days you struggle with breakfast, you're tired. Anything that you think you struggle with, or any challenges that you face this week that have potentially hampered your weight loss um, and your body transformation, write those down now. So pause this and write down two things that you've struggled with for this week. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to pick one thing that you're really going to focus on for this week. So last week I asked you to make sure you're having breakfast every single week. So it was myself giving you the impetus of what to do. But this week what I really want you to do is start doing it. So examples again, if you didn't complete a food diary, start having a food diary because they will make a massive, massive difference on your loss, on your, your weight loss goals. And um, so if you're not having a food diary, maybe it's going to be that. If you didn't manage to get to the gym as many times, go for that. If you didn't have breakfast that much, go, go for that. Whatever it is that you think, maybe it's one of your challenges that you've written down, whatever it is that you think is going to make a big difference for you this week. Um, so again, maybe you're not going to have any alcohol or maybe you're not going to have uh, any desserts after your main meals or any desserts full stop. Maybe you're going to um, stop having coffee after 2 p.m. Whatever it is that you think will make the biggest difference to your weight loss goals, pause this now and write that down. So you should now have on your sheet of paper two things that you've done really well this week and that you're proud of, two things that you've struggled with, with so two challenges, and then finally, what you're going to focus on improving this week. So write those down if you want to share them with me, then please do, just email them across and I'll have a look and give you any feedback as well. But let's keep going and always remember this picture, because I've got this picture every single week, but even if you lose half a pound per week, at the end of the year, this time, Next year, you'll be 26 pounds lighter, which is a massive difference. So even if it's only a small loss every single week, it all adds up in terms of it all compounds and becomes a massive, massive loss. So don't beat yourself up if you've had one or two days that have not been that great. Uh, if you have had a few, then that's fantastic. We need to keep it going as well. But even if we lose half a pound per week, and bearing in mind on this cost, we, we, we recommend losing between one to two pounds per week, you'll still be 26 pounds lighter by this time next year, which is an enormous difference. So like I said, every week we start off with weigh-in and cheers and challenges and future recommendations. So this week, what I want you to do 
is alongside this video I'll have sent you a, a, a sheet of paper that's been emailed to you so you need to get that off and you need to print that off. Um, if you don't have that now please pause it, go ahead and print it off because you're going to have to write down basically numbers on it. So what you're going to do is you're going to score each statement as followed in the shading boxes. So if you strongly disagree with a statement, so if the statement is I regularly snack late at night and you never snack late at night you'll put a 1. If you hardly ever snack you'll put a two. If you occasionally snack, you'll put a three. If you snack quite often late at night, you'll put a four. And if you always snack at night, you'll put a five. Um, so again, example would be if you always, I always finish my plate. If you never finish your plate, you'd put a one. If you always, always finish your plate, you'd put a five. So that's what you're gonna do now. So you're gonna go down and you're gonna add the totals up in each column. So you're only gonna write in the gray area, so in the shaded boxes. So the first one, like I say, it'll be one to five, and then the second one will be on the second column, the third one, the third column. So pause this now and go through every single one of them and write down the numbers in them. So like I said, this might take five, 10 minutes, take your time with it, because it's a really important task. So each single question, one to five, fill that in. Okay, you should now have gone down all the way across and put one to five on every single grey box, so only the shaded boxes get filled in. So what I want you to do now is add up the totals of each column and put the final score. So with that, it needs to go from, say, so say number one, the grey box is in column one, in row one. Then what you're going to do, it's about row seven, then row 13, etc., etc. So you're going to go down each column, so all the way down to the bottom, and then on the back of the sheet, on the second sheet, you're gonna write down your total for that individual column. And you're gonna do that with every single one. So add them all up and then put your final score in the bottom. Okay, so you should now have filled it all in, put number one to five in every single one, and then you should have added the totals up in each column and put the final score in. If you have done, great. If you need more time, then just take the time now, pause this and get it finished off. Okay, so now what I want you to do is we're going to have a look at the eating style. So I want you to header each column like the below. So on your first one, you've got emotional eater or EE. On your second one, we've got big eater. On your third one, we've got people pleaser. Fourth one, we've got addictive eater. Fifth one, lazy eater. And sixth one, control eater. So pause this now. Write all of those in every single column. Okay, so you should now have emotionally a big eater, people pleaser, addictive eater, lazy eater, control freak. So your sheet of paper should look exactly like that, except that you've got numbers in the grey area. So what we're going to do now is have a look at what they all mean. So first up, we've got the emotional eater, so first on the left. Um, and now bearing in mind, you fill this in, so you can probably guess where this is going, but the higher ones of your numbers, so if you have a look at the bottom of your numbers, if any of them are over 20, that should, means that you show traits of this eating style. If any of them are over 25, then you very much show traits of it, and it's particularly something that um, has, has caused maybe your weight gain or is stopping you from losing weight. So have a look at those numbers, and the ones that you have the biggest numbers in, they're the ones that you show the most traits of and have the most problems with. So emotionally, uh, emotionally, the main thing that they do is they use food to compensate for something that is lacking in their life. So it might be boredom, might be stress from work, uh, loneliness, any sort of feelings, they turn to food to stifle those feelings down because they feel like they're in control of it. They use food to try and change the negative mood to deal with them, those emotions. So exam examples of emotionally as people who feel unattractive, so they eat to almost drown their sorrows, or those who decide that they can eat exactly what they want so that they can have a bad day at work. Like I say, so if they feel like they're not in control of work or they're not in control of the social life or any other aspect of their life, they feel like they're in control of what they eat. So they emotionally eat to try and fill that void. Um, generally speaking, the satisfaction is very, very short lived and it can be followed by feelings of guilt, which can spark off again another amount of emotional eating. So it's very much a vicious circle with the emotional eating. Next one we've got is a big eater, and the primary thing behind this is the big eater doesn't like to waste food. Um, 
traits often people from the big eating category that have higher traits in big eating um, they've been made to feel like they need to eat everything on their plate as a child and um, so they have to clear the plates even if they're way past feeling full they get to the point of they have to you know unbutton the trousers to, to, to make more room for the belly um, and they may even go as far as clearing the plates of others as well and we most often see this with people who have children as well they'll clear their plate and then they'll clear the children's plate as well um, big trait they have is they enjoy getting value for money so they'd rather go to a carvery and all you can eat uh, over the a la carte menu so they, they, for them quantity of the amount of food that they have is far more important than quality then we have the people pleaser so what this person likes to do is keep everybody happy so um, they hate to say no to people if whatever they basically get served in front of them is what they'll eat so they, they put other people's needs ahead of them um, so they will eat whatever isn't good for them eat because they don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings um, particularly if someone's prepared it so uh, often people in relationships when you've got a people pleaser they'll put weight on because their partner will prepare the food and it'll be high it'll be basically the wrong stuff for what they need or it'll be higher fat or they'll be making the same um, portions for both people um, <clears throat> and they feel bad basically of telling someone that they don't want to have it so and that they prefer to eat something else so that tends to be the reason why the people pleaser gains weight then we've got an addictive eater um, so the addictive eater crave junk food, refined carbohydrates, sugary snacks, fizzy drinks. Often people who score high in um, people in um, emotional eater will score high in addictive eater as well. And they've got great difficulty with resisting these types of food because they're stuck in what I'd call a sugar cycle. Um, or they'll start eating them and they'll really, really struggle to stop eating them. They think about food a lot of the time and they generally display a lack of control around it. So they, they as soon as they think about food, they want it. They can't um, have some sweets or some chocolate or some junk food in the house and not eat it. Um, the people who may go to the extremes as well, so um, they may likely give up their normal eating habits if they feel guilty after a heavy eating period. So they'll go from eating a lot of food to eating no food at all. Um, so again, they'll, they'll do fast days, that sort of stuff. Um, so an addictive eater, like I say, generally it's junk food, refined carbohydrates, it's foods because they're addicted to actual chemical compositions of this food. Um, you know, Red Bulls, coffees as well tends to be traded with them because they're addicted to how the food makes them feel. And then we've got the lazy eater. So the lazy eater, food is the bottom of their priority. So they look at food, food the same way that they look at petrol in their car purely a fuel. It's something they have to do to keep going and they can't be bothered to plan or prepare meals. So as you'll know as the weeks go on, I'm very big on Tupperware boxes because I think if you prepare your meals before, your lunches, particularly your dinners, um, then what will happen is you'll find that you'll naturally start losing weight because you'll be making better choices. Um, they often will overeat but the quality of meals that they'll have will be so poor um, that it'll cause them to have basically too many calories and too little nutrients. Um, so they'll have for ready meals, takeaways, fast food, that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and sometimes what they'll do is they'll even forget to eat and then they'll binge later on in the wrong food. So they won't eat for hours and hours. And then they'll get in and they'll just have loads and loads of food. So they'll literally get in or they'll drive up and work and they'll be like, oh crap, I've not eaten anything all day. Get themselves to McDonald's and grab a Big Mac. So that's the lazy eating trait. <clears throat> and then we have the control freak eater. So again, these can tie in with emotion eaters, but they're terrified of feeling out of control in their world. So they use food as a way of controlling what they can, especially if they believe, like I said, same thing with emotional eaters, that work, relationships, significant others, things like that are out of control. So for them, food is the only thing, food and their body is the only thing that they can have. So they tend to basically turn to food um, when other things become unmanageable. So when the expectations become too high in them by others, or they, they can't express themselves in the way that they want to express the way for themselves, then that's when they'll turn to food. So that's a control freak eater. Now, looking at your results, and now you know a little bit about each one of them, are there any of them that surprised you? Now, most people will say, look at it and go, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. And the clear fact is that you've answered these in a way that you didn't know what it was beforehand. So some of them might surprise you. Um, but like I say, most people will look at it and go, yeah, that's pretty much right. So when I was first testing out this questionnaire, I gave it to loads of my clients and um, I gave it to an overweight friend and this one sticks with me 
in my in my head for a while because what she basically found out is that she was a big eater. So she didn't think she was a big eater, but it turned out she was. And then on reflection, we delved a little bit deeper, and then it turned out that from an early age, she wasn't allowed to actually leave the table until the plate was cleared, and that habit had followed her into adulthood. So she did wouldn't leave the table until her, her her plate had been completely finished, even if she was way past full. And what that meant is she was eating far too many calories. So now that you know your results as well, I'll send you across a worksheet and what I want you to do is try and overcome that, overcome these um, through a method called NLP anchoring. So I'll send that worksheet across for you um, and it'll take about half an hour to an hour to do. I'd advise being on your own somewhere where you can do it. So don't do it in a 15 minute lunch break. Take the time to actually really think about it because it will help you immensely, especially if you've been struggling with stuff like emotionally and things like that. It's really worthwhile doing. So there's your results. Now we're going to have a look at our different types of, uh, of body types essentially. So there's three main types of body types. So and they're the ones that you can see in the bottom. We've got an ectomorph, an endomorph, and a mesomorph or mesomorph, however you want to pronounce it. I think mesomorph is more American. Um, so they're the three different body types. Now what we're going to do is have a look through each different one of them. So we're going to have a look at what traits they have, um, what eating style is best for them, for their training style, and what training style is best as well. So how they should basically train when they're in the gym or at home. Now with an ectomorph, they tend to be that basketball type appearance. So tall, skinny, long limbs. It's basically that guy or girl that everyone knows that doesn't gain weight. They can literally eat and eat and eat whatever they want, sugary stuff, they just don't gain weight. Ectomorphs are naturally chronically skinny, and we've all got friends who are extreme ectomorphs, where they've, like I said, they've got really long limbs, really tall and really slim. Tend to have males tend to have a big Adam's apple as well, so they have a slight frame and a very, very, very quick metabolism. Um, and although they have a very hard time of gaining fat, they also have an extremely hard time of gaining muscle as well. So they really have a tough time of gaining any sort of mass whatsoever. Um, so if this is yourself, or if this is somebody that you know and you know they're trying to add on a bit of muscle because that's generally what ectomorphs come to, they want to add a little bit of muscle and a little bit of size, what they're going to have to do is big heavy compound exercises, so that's stuff like squats, bench press, pull-ups, deadlifts, overhead presses, um, it's going to have to be a full body program three times a week and they're going to have to up their calories through the roof. So that's what an ectomorph would have to do in the gym. Um, in terms of nutrition, it's really important for an ectomorph to make sure that they're having enough calories. So they need to write down what they're currently eating and tally up the calories. One of the biggest recommendations I have to make it easier is to add servings to your meal and maybe add another meal or two in the day so that they're adding an extra 500 additional calories per day. In terms of protein, they want to have a pretty high protein level. So it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of your body weight each day. So an example of that, if you weigh 150 pounds, you should be consuming 90 to 120 grams of protein. And they should have high fat diets as well, So, but only healthy unsaturated fats. So nuts, seeds, coconut oils, olive oils, that sort of stuff, um, with approximately 120 calories per serving, because they want as much muscle building fuel as possible. And they're going to have to eat a lot of huge portions to put size on. So your fats, because it's nine calories per gram in comparison to four calories, with protein and carbohydrates, you can get more bang for your buck if you like. So the more calories that you're, you're having, particularly with an ectomorph, it'll help them. And then what we got is a mesomorph. So um, they're the athletic person, you know, the person that we had at school that was pretty much good at every single sport. Um, the guy that walks into a weight training room and he just looks at weights and puts muscle on. Um, so perfect mesomorphs are those who are naturally pretty much good at everything without having to really put in the practice. Like I say, someone who picks up a tennis racket and they're good at tennis, someone who picks up cricket bat, good at that, etc. etc. They've got an athletic physique, generally a strong bone structure. And they have a better innate ability to put muscle on than any other group. Um, but they can also put fat on as well. They can put more fat on than ectomorphs, but less fat on than endomorphs. Um, but they can put muscle on, but they can put fat on too. In terms of their training, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, in terms of they'll put muscle on and they'll stay quite lean uh, as long as they're younger. But I, I always think for a mesomorph, the best thing to do is to combine resistance and interval training. Um, resistance training, they'll put muscle mass on them. And interval training, particularly once you get past 14, your metabolism starts to slow down, is a great way to help them prevent the fat gain as well. So they've got the best of both worlds. So um, resistance training and interval training is absolutely the best for a mesomorph. But again, they can do compounds exactly the same. as It doesn't matter too much. They could literally train like an ectomorph or an endomorph and still get great benefits from it. Um, and then what we have, finally, is an endomorph. So uh, on these weight loss courses that I've, I've um, taught, Generally speaking, most people 
perceive themselves as endomorphic um, or at least having part endomorphic because you can be a mixture of two um, some people are, are, are you know ectomesomorphs where they they can put muscle mass on but they're quite tall as well a lot of people are meso uh, endomorphs so they'll but fat on really easy, but they can also put muscle on too. So you're generally not purely one thing or the other, you're generally a mixture of, of two. But a, a pure endomorph is a guy that looks at donut and gains weight. They literally look at carbohydrates, smell some sugar, and that's it, they put a pound on. Um, they're often short, stocky, um, they gain muscle pretty well as well, but they literally put fat on pretty much effortlessly. Um, one thing I would say, a very good trait of an endomorph is that they're, they're, they're strong, so they are good at weight training, but they also tend to carry a lot of excess weight, so they're really strong at, at compound exercise, explosive exercises, that sort of stuff, but in terms of... Um, you know, long-term uh, cardiovascular training, steady-state exercise they struggle with purely because of the amount of excess weight that they're holding as well. With the uh, uh, endomorph, I've got a few golden rules. So protein is your best friend in the world. You should have protein with every single meal and make it around 30% of your meal. Um, whereas what most endomorphs do and what the, you know, the food plate and, and that sort of stuff show us is that we should be having mainly carbohydrates and I say switch this round with, with the, um, if, if you think you're endomorphic protein should be the most important thing on your plate because you need a minimum of 30% of every single meal whereas what most people do is they'll have cereal for breakfast with a little bit of milk and it's you know got hardly any protein in and then they'll maybe have a sandwich for lunch and it's got hardly any protein in and maybe like a pasta based dish for tea and again hardly any protein in so we need to switch that round so that you're having a much higher protein diet um, fat is your friend too um, despite what it sounds like fat doesn't make you fat as long as it's good types of fat. So again, the same as what is recommended for an endomorph, um, perhaps, but 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 obviously less quantities. So your good essential unsaturated fats, um, and eating fat will actually make you skinny. So like I say, despite the fact it seems counterintuitive, eating fat will make you skinny. A third of your fat should come from mono unsaturated fats. So olive oil, nuts, nut butter, avocados. A third of your fat should come from polyunsaturated fats. So some nuts, fish fish oil, flaxseed, so your omega freeze, and a third of your fat from sugar from saturated fats, so animal fats, eggs, meats, butter, coconut oil, and again, obviously that's where you get a lot of your protein from as well. Um, but definitely focus on more mono and polyunsaturated fats, which tend to be lacking in most people's diets. So adding olive oils, avocados, and fish oils to diet that's high in proteins and vegetables will give you a diet that's got the best results. So there's a couple of golden rules. Now carbohydrates, and although They've got a very bad reputation, and I don't, I don't believe in um, getting them out of your diet completely. With If you have endomorphic, carbohydrates can be your worst enemy because you need to make sure that your portions are fine. If your portions are fine, then you will not gain weight. But what most people do with carbohydrates is they're very easy to, to they give themselves a portion that's way too big Excuse me, in comparison to the serving size. So my recommendation is that you should only eat starchy or sugary carbs immediately after your workouts. Um, other than that, I recommend avoiding starchy and sugary carbs altogether. So you still want fruit, you still want mounds and mounds of vegetables, um, and on exercise days you can definitely have more calories and more carbohydrates, but the reason for that is carbs can be hard on your body because of the way that endomorphs have a relationship with insulin. So insulin is basically a hormone that tells your body to absorb blood glucose and sugar from your blood and use it as energy. So we will go in more into that in depth um, in the next coming weeks. But the problem that has is through a combination of genetics and environmental conditioning, uh, endomorphic bodies are not as efficient at using insulin to lower blood sugars, which means that the body basically will turn starchy carbohydrates and sugary carbohydrates. Those that are fast glycemic index um, carbohydrates will tend to, the blood sugar levels will spike and insulin levels will just go absolutely bonkers. Uh, like I said, though, the only exception to this is pre-workout. You can have maybe some slower, like I said, lower GI, something like if you're training in for breakfast, you'd have porridge, but again, try and get your protein in there as well. Um, and the real big exception is post-workout, and that's because when you're working out, your glycogen levels are depleted, so your blood sugar levels and your muscles are depleted, and what will happen is rather than your body turning the carbohydrates you're going to have into fat, it'll re replenish those glycogen stores in your muscles. So that's carbs for endomorphs. And top tip, this is for everybody, don't matter if you're mesomorph, endomorph, um, 
or, or endomorphic or uh, ectomorphic is eat often. So you need to try and eat every three to four hours if you can, because this will help your metabolism give you a quick start. Um, although this is, like I say, it's contentious whether that actually is, is true or not. Some people, um, it's some, some studies show it, it will help your metabolism eating every three to four hours. Other studies show it's, it's not too much. The main point is the amount of calories that you're having. Personally, I think that if you eat often, um, it allows for your brain to make the decisions and not your belly. So that's the most advantage thing for me is that if you eat often, you never get in a situation where you're starving and you never get in a situation where you're just grabbing for whatever's quickest, which is generally carbohydrates or poor choices. So if you eat often, eat every three to four hours, so your main meals and your snacks, it allow your brain to make the decision and not your belly. So never get to the point where you're absolutely starving, like I say, or poor decisions will generally be made. And um, training, this is for endomorphic people. Um, people always ask in terms of training for endomorph, what's the problem, you know, with this, that, and the other kind of, but the, the issue that you have is that it's not, the problem is not where you're training, it's absolutely where your diet. Now, anybody can lose weight without going to the gym, and anybody can lose weight just through having good nutrition. So it doesn't matter what style that you use or how you train, if you're having too many calories, the simple fact is, yes, you will get fitter and yes, you'll get all the benefits like that with the heart, but in terms of weight loss, you will not lose weight. But let's say you are doing that and your diet's absolutely spot on, then the best way for an endomorphic person to train to maximize fat loss is a combination of HIIT and like I call them Blitzkrieg style workouts. So they're weight training circuits, basically. HIIT and weight training circuits, you wanna keep your heart rate high. Um, and these are the sessions that I absolutely recommend. So um, where I'll be sending you across with some circuits to do at home circuits this week, and um, your task is to pick one. What I want you to do is get them done and see how you feel when you're doing that. But these are the workouts for you to do. Same for mesomorphs as well, and absolutely for endomorphs. You need to be doing your HIIT training, and you need to basically try and burn as many calories as you can and get your metabolism spiked. And weight training circuits and HIIT training definitely, definitely does that. So the exercises that you need to be doing, uh, compound exercises, high intensity exercises. So again, similar to ectomorphs, your squats, your bench presses, your deadlifts, um, they can all increase your muscle building hormones significantly and you can increase the amount of muscle that you've got as well and the increase the amount of calories that you're burning. So plenty of workouts around those basic movements and any isolation exercises um, afterwards then use them, any any isolation exercise you want to do, such as like a, a, a bicep curl or a tricep extension or anything like that, stick them at the end and hit exercise. I can't explain to you how important it is to get doing your hit to burn that fat because it really will make a massive, massive difference. So like I said, this week's task, just to finish off then, um, I will send you across five circuits to do. There'll be different options on there, such as beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So select what level you're at. And I want you to try a circuit exercise session from the circuit. And let me know you get on. Um, if you're on Instagram, get us followed on Instagram. So it's Inspired Body Transformation. Um, you can follow us on Facebook as well. And get those sweaty selfies posted. So we love those. So hashtag Inspired Body Transformation, hashtag um, sweaty selfie. And let us know how you're getting on with those circuits. If you have any questions at all, uh, we check our emails every single day. So just send us an email back any questions there's no such thing as a stupid question and um, so fire and back us so thank you very much for listening that is week two and i can't wait to speak to you again next week for week three bye bye